but I just want to go ahead and welcome everybody to uh, Libations with uh, the Chicago Bruseum and Sacred Transformations, a collaborative uh, series of virtual programs that we're offering during the month of August, uh, Libations in conjunction with an exhibition that's being held uh, at the uh, Fluid Coffee Bar in Michigan City, explores the celebratory and ceremonial aspects of uh, beverages and uh, people coming together to consume and drink, whether it is an alcoholic beverage or non-alcoholic beverages. And just uh, throughout the month of August, we've been exploring the, the history of libations, the history of, of beverages and the community surrounding that, um, the the almost the, the social cultural aspects of um, communal uh, beverage drinking, and uh, but then also acknowledging ex and, and, and exploring the negative consequences of alcohol and overindulgence uh, and how we can repair and heal from that. So, the uh, the Chicago Museum has been hosting these uh, near weekly virtual happy hour sessions since uh, late March, early April. And so as all of the um, bars and, and, and tap rooms, like how much uh, breweries, uh, um, coffee shops uh, and, and cafes and juice bars all around the country, around the world have been closed. All of these really critical social spaces the, um, the, the you, Chicago Brazil has been no, stepping up to, to create these, these virtual spaces for you, uh, this virtual uh, gathering room for all of us to come together and maintain that idea of, of social connection during a time of physical distancing. Uh, I'm going to jump in here now and, and introduce our um, speaker for the fourth and final session of the libation series. And, uh, but don't, don't worry because the Chicago Museum will continue with um, a virtual happy hours after this. This just concludes the libation series tonight. Uh, and you can go back and find all of the libation series on the Chicago Museum YouTube page, as well as the Chicago Museum Facebook page. All of the, those video recordings are available up there. So, but tonight I'm really excited and happy to uh, welcome Rebecca Raspberry. Rebecca is the owner of Vibrations Health Wellness Juice Bar and Cafe in uh, Gary, Indiana, uh, Miller, in the Miller, Miller Beach neighborhood of Gary, Indiana. And uh, tonight, Rebecca Raspberry will be speaking on the topic, as it says up on the screen here. But uh, for, for those of us who aren't looking, uh, I'll read, go fruit yourself the benefits of <laughs> detoxing through juicing and herbs. So I think this is a wonderful capstone to the libation series to explore uh, the, the other side of, uh, of, of libations beyond the alcoholic beverages we've been exploring a lot. So Rebecca, thanks so much. Welcome and uh, really Thank pleased you. to have you. And I'll, I'll hand the microphone, microphone on over to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lucas. Hey, I'd like to um, thank you and Eric um, for an amazing collaboration on such a beneficial and powerful exhibition that you all have done. And I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Pleasure. So, Thank you. So welcome to Go Fruit Yourself. Um, tonight we're going to talk about the benefits of detoxing through juicing and herbs because that's what we do at Vibrations. Um, it's about health, wellness, um, and taking care of our mind, body, and spirit. This evening, we're gonna discuss the new normal, the impact of negative behavior, the benefits of implementing positive habits, healthy eating, and the nuts and bolts, um, and medicinal herbs um, to help us do all that. So I think we can all agree uh, that the pandemic has challenged us personally as a society in almost every imaginable way. Um, as with any challenge, we can choose a couple different ways. We can choose to raise our vibration or we can choose to take an easier, softer way and look for instant relief from the pressure. Um, 
in a mere few months, everything has changed. Uh, this includes how we interact with each other, um, how we carry out our daily duties, the way uh, we work, and everything in between. Um, I think that some of the most drastic changes have been in the way that we entertain ourselves. We can no longer safely gather in public spaces, be entertained, so we have to entertain ourselves at home. And what happens then? This makes it very easy to slip in that, slip into that occasional beverage every single night. <laughs> the libations, it passes the time, it makes us feel better for the moment. And it makes us forget about the current situation. Um, these behaviors can quickly become habits. Some good, some not so good. But we're gonna talk about how we change that. Um, so we want to talk about those bad habits and um, alcohol consumption um, when we're using those tools to, to ease the stress, ease the pain, and make us feel better for the moment. Uh, this slide that I have up now is the impacts of alcohol consumption. Um, they've increased during the pandemic. It's a known fact that drinking alcohol every day can lead to serious health risks. Um, we have long turned to alcohol to try to relieve everyday stress, loneliness, boredom. These are all triggers and all of these factors nowadays are through the roof. And so are the number of people who are drinking on a daily basis. So let's discuss some alcohol free strategies for coping. It's time to give the body a break. Um, I didn't review that slide, but I'd like to go over that really quickly. Um, if I can enlarge it and I can talk about it, which of course I can't. <laughs> um, got some help here somewhere. Sorry about that. Well, it's looking great on our end here. Okay, so we're talking about, um, the slide talks about um, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual impacts of overconsumption. Um, the physical impacts include weight gain, increased risk of high blood pressure and diabetes, um, suppressing the immune system, which is not a good thing because right now we need to increase our immune system. Um, during this pandemic to protect ourselves. Emotionally, um, there's detachment, depression, worsened anxiety, personality changes. We take more risks um, uh, when we're consuming more alcohol. Um, spiritual, it lowers our vibrations. There's no growth. So we wanna discuss how we're going to change this. But before we start that, um, I'd like to share with you a surprising statistic, which a lot of people, when you review this statistic, say, oh, wow. Um, the National Heart Association defines binge drinking as, <laughs> and this one is pretty funny, um, because I'm sure that we indulge all of us with this, four more drinks for women, five or more drinks for men in a two hour period. And I think that this second one, moderate drinking is really the one that gets us. It's like, wow. So moderate drinking is if I have one glass a day because I'm a woman, <laughs> that's it. That's all I can have. Normally I have one, I definitely want another one. Um, one to two drinks for men a day. So I want to share that little statistic with you um, because I think it's a wow moment when we take a look at that. So let's get started. Um, so how do we get started on, on changing these bad behaviors to good behaviors? Um, we wanna focus, we wanna develop uh, positive behaviors that support growth. This is a very good start. Self-care. When we talk about self-care, we talk about mind, body, and spirit, encompassing our, our entire being. 
Um, we want to be conscious of triggers. We want to be conscious of those things that make us um, go to that additional cocktail. Um, we want to tune into our body. Our bodies talk to us. They, they speak. A lot of the times we don't listen. Um, we need to tune into that and we need to say, hey, body's talking, let's listen to what it's saying. I'm sluggish, I'm tired, I don't have enough energy, I'm not motivated. So those are the things that we mean when we talk about tuning into our body. Uh, and we want to balance our vibrations, our energy. No pun intended there. <laughs> um, so meditation has a dramatic impact on the immune system. This is just a little tip to add into this. It reduces the blood pressure. Um, it reduces and lowers cholesterol levels as well. So this is something that we can implement um, into our daily lives. And this is a good habit that we can interject. So we want to talk about how we get started with this whole juicing things. A lot of times this is um, not known to people. People are brand new to this and it's like, yeah, but how do I get started with this? So we want to talk about the nuts and bolts um, or the carrots and beets, I like to call it, um, to detoxing the body using nutrition, juicing, and herbs. This is where we want to start. We're gonna talk about a three-prong approach. And that three-prong approach is consuming healthy foods, juicing, and then integrating herbs into our, our daily life to help detox the body. And we're gonna talk about those um, in detail as we proceed. Um, next, we wanna talk about the, the basic principle. And it, it, it really is pretty simple. Um, and I want to make this as simple as we possibly can. So basic operating principle, the body can heal itself. We just have to give it the opportunity to do so. And the way we do this is by giving it a break. We've got to give it a break from chemicals, processed foods, alcohol, and stress. And as we talked about before, we've got to be conscious of those signs when our body is telling us to do this. So what we want to start with is nutrition. Um, nutrition. Nutrition, next slide. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, nutrition, rule of thumb. We want to in, in integrate fresh green leafy vegetables into every single meal. Yes, even breakfast. So if we're doing eggs, we want to incorporate some spinach in there, some onions, um, any type of vegetable that we can. Because a lot of times you look at a breakfast plate and there's no green on it whatsoever. It's very important that we incorporate these green veggies into every single meal, including breakfast. Um, and remember, as we proceed, if we can't eat them, then we juice them. All right, so let's, let's talk about the basic starter plan. We're gonna talk about juicing. We're gonna start with fresh vegetables in the morning while the stomach is empty so that we can clear the digestive tract. This is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna boost your metabolism. That means it's gonna burn more calories and therefore it's gonna boost your energy which everybody needs. We're all like, oh, I'm sluggish, I'm tired, I have to stay at home. So when you get that boost of energy, um, it's, it's inspiring. It keeps us going. So we've got a couple different juice options. Um, the basics of juicing, there are two types of juicers. Um, there are actually a couple more than that, but you wanna focus on just these main two. There's a masticating juicer, which is going to give us a, a pulpy, foamy, chunky, um, more nutritious type of juice. Then there's the centrifugal juicer that's going to give us a smoother, consistent, little separation um, in that juice. 
um, and it's all a matter of preference. You know, which one do we want? We want the thicker one. Some people have issues with um, texture, so they can't necessarily stomach the juice that has the pulp in it. So I really think that it's a, it's a matter of preference um, if you want a thicker, pulpier juice or a smoother one. Um, the best juices, the best vegetables for juicing. Um, we've got carrots, cucumbers, celery, kale, spinach, beets, greens, ginger, turmeric, garlic, parsley, cabbage, wheatgrass, fennel, and Swiss chard. And you can pretty much add whatever you like to that. If there's some exotic fruit or vegetable that you want, that you see in the dro grocery store and you want to incorporate into your, into your juice, then do it. Um, I would like to say that um, celery loves the liver, parsley loves the liver, Swiss chard also loves the liver. So those are some of the top um, vegetables that we want to incorporate into our juicing. Um, I've got a tip on this slide also. Um, I'd like to share that with you. Buy organic when possible. Um, pesticides suck. If you cannot buy organic, then make sure that you're washing your vegetables thoroughly to remove those toxins. A lot of the softer vegetables will um, kind of absorb the pesticides. So you want to kind of stay away from those if you cannot do organic. All right. Um, again, stay away from store-bought juices. <laughs> They're no good. They're no good. They have preservatives. They have added sugars. They have added stuff in them that, that is not going to be beneficial for our detoxing process. The other option, so we've got juicing. The other option is blending or making smoothies. We can do either one of these. I do like to incorporate the fresh juices um, along with the smoothies. So making smoothies is the process of blending fruits and vegetables together in a blender. Um, a lot of recipes call for a base liquid of water. I think it's more nutritional for us to use liquids like coconut water or hemp milk or almond milk or juiced fruits and vegetables. So we can juice a carrot, we can juice some apple and we can add that into the, our blender um, as our liquid. And that's gonna give us more nutrition than actually adding water. And like I stated before, a lot of recipes call for water. We don't need it. The vegetables and the fruits have enough water in them. Let's add some more nutrients to that. So once we've cleansed the system, um, started this regiment with our fruits and our juices, um, we can start with our herbs. So it's herbs time, herb time. Um, and this is gonna help us detox the organs. Um, your juicing and your smoothies is gonna help detox the digestive system. Now we wanna get into the filtration system. Um, our filtration system, our organs are much like a vacuum cleaner filter. Um, if the bag is full, it doesn't work, right? So we need to clean it out and we've done that. So now we're gonna to turn to our, to our herbs for detoxing. What is detoxing? Um, detoxing is a process of removing toxins from the, from the body. And we're gonna talk about the best herbs to help detox those organs. Um, there are a lot of them, I'll tell you that. Um, herbs in action. So herbs support detoxification by removing poisons from the body via urination or sweating. And they also reduce toxicity of substances like cheese, alcohol, uh, processed foods. Herbs also help us optimize the function of eliminating organs. So it helps the, the liver and the kidneys eliminate um, those poisons that are in our body. Um, and I've got a note on this slide as well that tells us that many of these herbs can be found right in your backyard. Um, a little note on this that I noticed during the pandemic is that I've, I've seen 
herbs in abundance this year that I've never seen before. Um, stinging nettle, um, very high in vitamin C, boosts the immune system. And it was abundant this year. It was everywhere in my yard. It was at, it, at vibrations, it was at my resident. Um, driving down the street, I saw it, and I've never seen it as much as I've seen it this year. And I'm guessing that's due to the pandemic. Um, this is where we get into the spiritual healing as well. So we talked about herbs and, and it's herb time. So let's talk about what herbs we need. Um, a lot of the herbs have multiple medicinal purposes. Um, but there is a few that have been used for centuries by our ancestors, by the Native American Indians, um, that are staples. You know, there are a lot more, but there are several that are staples um, for detoxifying. Um, turmeric. Uh, turmeric has become very popular in the last, I would say, at least five years. Um, and has been used in the Indian culture for hundreds and hundreds of years. How does turmeric do it? Turmeric increases bile production in the body. And that bile production helps collect toxins in the body and then helps eliminate them, take them out. Milk thistle. Milk thistle, again, protects healthy cells um, and the liver stimula stimulates regener regeneration of new cells and mops up toxins, sweeps up, the anti sweeps up the antioxidants your body needs to protect it from free radicals. Um, a little tip on milk thistle is it reduces cholesterol, it supports weight loss, improves asthma symptoms, and supports bone health. So while we're using these to detox, we're also getting the benefits on the other side of these herbs, not just for detoxifying the body. Burdock. So burdock increases saliva in the mouth and it, and it also can increases the bile in the body, which helps break down, bind and excrete toxins from the body. Dandelion. Now, everybody knows this one, right? Dandelions in your backyard, everybody's trying to kill it. Um, we're using pesticides. This is an amazing herb. The flowers, the leaves, and the roots on the dandelion plant. Dandelion helps us um, helps protect against kidney stones. It's highly nutritious, very high in vitamin C and vitamin B as well. It protects the liver and it helps to protect, uh, helps to lower the blood pressure in the body. Um, it's great for the kidneys. It's great for the liver. Um, and it's a diuretic. So when you're intaking dandelion, you're going to go to the bathroom a lot. <laughs> so I always recommend that we take these herbs um, at night because the body is healing at night um, and it's in repair. And then we can always get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> so how do we do these herbs? Um, we're gonna talk about brewing them and making them into a tea. I get a lot of questions at Vibrations all the time. It's like, okay, what do I do with this? We make a tea with it. Um, brewing herbs for maximum, beneficial, uh, maximum medicinal benefits is brewing them for 30 minutes, no less. You got to get the medicine up, out. So we boil our water we infuse one to two teaspoons of herb to eight to 12 ounces of water. And this is just a, um, it's, it's just a, a staple. So if I wanna brew more of this, then I just use that recipe. We don't have to brew eight to 12 ounces at a time. We can do 24, we can do 36, but this is a rule of thumb, um, is one to two, teaspoons of herb, eight to 12 ounces of water. We wanna steep these herbs in the boiling water 
for 30 minutes or more. A lot of times people want to strain the herb out. You don't have to do that. You can leave it in there. Um, the herbs that we listed are not very bitter. So we can leave that in and just kind of strain it out as we go, as we drink it. And we wanna consume this concoction for two weeks. That's our starting point. After two weeks, we want to stop. We wanna lay off of this blend um, because what these herbs can do is they can loosen the stool um, and they can dehydrate us if we're not drinking enough water behind them. So rule of thumb, two weeks, lay off if we're eating right and we're juicing, then we won't need it for, you know, maybe around Thanksgiving or Christmas when we're eating those additional lovely foods that we like to eat and we kind of get off track. Um, when we blend these herbs, brew these herbs, hey, it's okay to add a little lemon, a little mint, a little honey for a little additional flavor. What we don't wanna do is we don't wanna add sugar. <laughs> we can add a little turbinado if we want, um, just a little bit because that's an unprocessed sugar. Um, but go ahead and make it um, exciting, a nice beverage, a nice libation to drink. Uh, so we've got, um, we've just done our three-prong approach to detoxing, um, changing the digestive tract. We talked about healthy eating, we talked about juices and blending, and we talked about herbs. So what I'd like to move to now is some questions and answers because there is always questions behind this. Well, what do I do? How do I do this? When do I start? Can I do this? Can I do that? So I'd like to address those because I think that, is, that's re that really is the bulk of our conversation is answering those questions and getting everybody really comfortable um, with this new process. When we step out of our comfort zone what we know and we move into something else. Um, we're always a little leery about that. So Lucas, if you want to um, lead that question and answer, that would be awesome. And I'm going yeah. to answer these to the best of my ability. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had a lot of chatter in the chat box. And just a reminder, if anybody right. has any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat box or uh, in, in, in moments of pause or even not during pause, you can just unmute yourself and ask the question, uh, interrupt us and <laughs> chime in, feel free. Um, and uh, I'm also checking out on Facebook as well to see um, questions that we might have had in, in there, uh, monitoring that. So we'll, we'll transfer those over for those of you who are wa uh, watching on Facebook Live. Um, but I think one, um, one question that was on um, uh, people's minds there was uh, well just going a little bit more into the, the differences between the masticating juicer and the centrifugal juicer <laughs> and, and that's always a trip up word yeah it's, it's centrifugal <laughs> <laughs> okay yes <laughs> get back to my, my right. physics there <laughs> but uh, yeah so the, in and uh is there a profound price difference? Where's a great place to, to search for these if we want to find, uh, if we want to acquire a juicer? And, uh, and is it basically a difference of whether it's, you know, chunky or smooth? <laughs> so good question. So the masticating juicer is the more popular residential juicer. You're going to be able to find that pretty easy in Walmart, Amazon, um, it's a slower process in the juicing process, but you really do get that um, heartier juice. Um, it's thicker. It's going to last longer in the digestive tract. Um, Amazon. Uh, one juicer that I really, really like is, um, and it's a masticating juicer, and it's Champion. They've been around for several years, like lots and lots of years, like 
the way I got started in, in this business was my father started his health food store in 1971 in High Park in Chicago. I was seven years old. Um, and I remember that he had the champion juicer. It is still around. That juicer runs about 350, maybe, maybe the price has gone down a little bit. So 250 to 350 uh, for that juicer. The masticating juicers are going to be, um, the, I'm sorry, centrifugal juicers are going to be a little more expensive. That's the one with the centrifugal force. So it's like, boom, it annihilates the, the foods that you put in there. Also with the masticating juicer and the champion in particular is that you can do um, natural ice cream. It's kind of an ice cream. You simply put the fruit in, frozen, press it, and it comes out like a sorbet. So I really Sounds like nice. I really like the masticating for residential. I have masticating at home. I have the centrifugal at vibrations because we need to work a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. But with the centrifugal, you can also add those um, um, add additional veggies, then take it and blend it. Add some veggies to add your pulp to it. So masticating, I like best. Yeah. Oh, good castle. And um, yeah, I mean, you're talking a lot about the um, the the yeah, just the difference between with with, with or without pulp. Uh, certainly, I know I'm a big pulp fan. I mean, I like to chew my juice. I am uh, too. I am too. <laughs> and then it's more filling as well to last longer in your stomach. Well, and and what about also the and the just difference? How is 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 a pulpy juice that much more healthful? for you. Uh, Eric is. asked that in the chat too. You know, how much of the good stuff do you do you lose if uh, if you take out all strain out all that that pulp? So you lose what you're losing is fiber. So you you're losing that roughage that goes in the stomach and scrubs the digestive tract. If you've got a, a smoother juice with a centrifugal. So we want that fiber. You know, we want that that chewiness. It's going to fill us up more. Um, but again, it's a matter of preference. People have problems with texture. And sure. if, they, if they're drinking something and there's, you know, something in their mouth, it's like, Ugh, what is that? <laughs> so sure. it's a matter of preference. But beneficial wise, I think the masticating is best. Mm -hmm. You know, and something I was also thinking is, well, with um, the difference with fruits, especially, which, of course, have this high sugar content, uh, I, I heard, and maybe if you can confirm, just that uh, uh, eating the, the whole raw fruits um, has, again, all this fiber within it that perhaps causes your body to process the sugars more slowly, and, and juicing as a fruit is, is, in essence, just drinking, uh, I don't know, like flavorful sugar sugar water, but maybe maybe that's a bit hyperbolic of a statement. I don't know. <laughs> so here's the rule of thumb with that, Lucas. Um, you want to consume your fruits early in the morning because of the sugar content. And a lot of people compare like processed sugar with the sugar content of fruits. It's not the same. Mm -hmm. um, but rule of thumb, if you're thinking on those lines, is to consume so that you burn. At night, we're not burning, we're slowing down. The process is you know, slowing down in the body. So what we wanna do is say, okay, well, if I'm gonna do my fruits and I'm gonna blend my smoothie, then I'm gonna do it early. I'm gonna do it in the morning, I'm gonna do it in the afternoon, and not so much at night, so that the body can use that fuel as energy and not just turn it into sugar and it's just lying there. So that's the rule of thumb. But Fruits are fruits are fruits. They're fantastic. So not so much at night, but in the morning and the afternoon. Yeah. Rebecca, I have a question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Eric. Yes, sir. Our co-curator of the uh, libations uh, series that we have going on here, Eric Dean Spruth of Sacred Transformation. I didn't give you a full proper introduction at the beginning. There, it's Eric. okay. Uh, thank you, Lucas. <laughs> and thank, thank you, Lucas. And thank you, Rebecca, and really everybody who made this month you know, a lot more interesting and celebrating something that happens 
on a regular basis, drinking, consuming water, or whatever we take in, and you know, being able to celebrate the fact that it brings people together. And obviously, what we choose to consume, you are what you eat, as you said in your uh, write up, Rebecca. And I think a lot of people want to get on board with doing, making better decisions and having a better lifestyle. But the reality is, you know, to, to really eat well, um, you need money. And unfortunately, we've this, the cards have been stacked against us um, as far as like, uh, you know, the food that's available is less expensive, is full of sugar and carbs and not the greatest, um, greatest sustainable items. Yes or no? So... This comes I'm just looking for. I'm, Actually, I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking for an agreement. Would you agree that the majority of food that's available for the masses is not necessarily at a reasonable price? Not necessarily the the healthiest choice. No, I think that it's a matter of choice. Okay. So it's buying a buying a bunch of spinach and buying a um, you know, um, greens and green peppers. It's cheaper than buying a box of processed food because it's going to number one go further. This leads into my question. So I, I, I respect your position. I respect you in the community. You do amazing things. I'm so glad you're a part of this. But could you talk a little bit about those simple nuts and bolts, the, the types of decisions that you encourage people to make by being customers at your facility? But for me, more importantly, the thing I really admire about you is you're not just you're not just uh, uh, talking the talk and selling the walk. You're talking the talk and you're promoting the walk. And I've seen you time and time again talk to people about making these kinds of choices within their own uh, home. So could you talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the decisions people can make um, to really bring this into their lifestyle in a way where it can't get dismissed because they can't afford a, a, you know a, um, a drink at a restaurant. Okay, so I think we addressed that in the beginning of the presentation with nutrition. So okay. it's healthy food choices. And yes, you're right. A lot of these, you know, we, we choose the center aisle in the grocery store. Don't yep. shop the center aisle. Shop the perimeter of the store. The perimeter is going to give you your fruits and your vegetables. The middle of the store is going to give you your potato chips and your processed food and your Kraft macaroni and cheese. We want to stay away from that area. And ultimately, Eric, that area is more expensive because the amount of food that you get in that area is less than what you're going to get on the parameter. I can buy more fruits and vegetables with $5 than I can for the price of a box of macaroni and cheese. And that's going to last and me long. And I, I would like to do a little sociological experiment here. Um, yes. These are my kids here in the pool. I don't know. Can you see us right now or no? I can see you. Okay, good. Here, Drake and Isis, uh, say hello to the people out there. Oh, hi, guys. I want to answer your question. What is aisle one at Aldi called? What is aisle one at Aldi? Oh, the temptation aisle. What is it called? Temptation Isle. So we call it the Isle of Temptation. It and is. All the, it is. All got wild and they mixed it all up. But all the old stores, Isle 1 was all the junk you don't need, but you want, you get seduced by, and you negate all the good stuff, as you said, which is less expensive. You go home with a whole banana box full of food versus a half a banana box. So it's right. not just us. It's, it's teaching our young people to really – um, really respect that and, and have more enjoyable stuff around the house to eat. I, I love what you do, Rebecca. You're an amazing human being. Well, thank you. Now, Eric, it's only half of the first diet because the other half is the fruits and vegetables. Now, that's a new setup. See, the, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, responding, they're responding to basically 11 years of Aldi conditioning because we do the shopping. Yeah. And 11 years of Aldi conditioning was they understood we skipped aisle one because aisle one was, in fact, the full aisle of temptation. But now all they got wise in the marketing, and they're mixing it all up through the this, through this store now. So it's a little more complicated to get your kids uh, on board. And these guys literally loaded the cart. They got so good at it, they could load the cart. I love Aldi. Aldi is a great shopping option, by the way. I've seen you buy your bananas there. Yeah. Yeah, all these great it's when like, you just you, you go down the aisle and you basically just hold your arm out and just let everything flow into your heart because it's just so so cost effective. But I, I have trouble getting past the first couple of shelves, which is where all the beer is. But uh, right, and to promote that yeah. store a little bit more, you know, their staff they're making eighteen seventy five an hour, 
And at this point during COVID for, I think it's $1.99, you can go online and ask for everything you want and pull up to the front of the store and have it boxed and ready for you. I think it's $1.99. I miss, I miss shopping. Shopping for us was a fun activity. So we really miss going, but it, it's an amazing store and they have amazing, amazing products that are, are reasonable enough that a family could eat there and eat well. And broadly speaking, I think just touching on the idea of just the consumer conveniences that we've come to uh, enjoy during during this <laughs> pandemic oh, I'm lockdown. Loving I, wonder, it, I love it. I can just have everything delivered. <laughs> yeah. I, and how how much is this is going to be? Is this going to stick around as a as a new normal? Are we going to always think, expect to I be even for? I think that it is. Yeah, are we going to expect yes, almost like the pull up to the brewery and get our curbside delivery of a, of a, yeah. a six pack of beer or something like that? Um, <laughs> Eric, I'd like to say one more thing to um, address what your question was and the, the pricing of food. So the idea is to um, cook at home, plan your meals, and when you yes. do that, you save money. When we go for the quick options, um, then that's when it gets more expensive. But yeah, I think we all agree we love Aldi. Yes. Maybe they'll become a sponsor for the next libation show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or for Aldi, your new, new Aldi spokesman. Well, you know, I, I, I'm going to retire in 30 months. And one of the things I would love to do is actually set up a mini, um, a mini, a mini like sample sample area in Aldi where you basically just make stuff out of what they have and show people like this meal for five people is eleven dollars and you'll have leftovers. Oh I love but, like, it. Do, yeah do like sample cooking in this store. So that that store specifically um so I don't know if they go for it but I, I sure love it. Yeah, I think, yeah. I mean all all together to to reach like a greater level of uh, I think n nutrition equity across the culture, which we what we what we suffer from is is a just a altogether fundamental I think lack of of education in terms of like how do I prepare? I can I mean I see I pass all these fresh fruits and vegetables in the grocery store, but once I own them, I don't know I don't know what to do with them. So you're so absolutely I don't know. correct, Lucas, and yeah. I, I address that um, a lot at the store because it's foreign. Yeah. And I always tell people, I said, our change is not going to be very quick because we did not get where we are in a little bit of time. It's been a lifetime. It's what our parents taught us. I was lucky enough to have parents that taught me how to eat this way. Mind you, hated it when it was happening. I'm like, no, I just want to be like every other kid. Um, so you're absolutely correct. It's about teaching and that's what we do at Vibrations. We teach and we motivate and we, we show people how this can be done and how easily it can be done. Easier than kind of what we're used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know, earlier on, uh, you know, I, I got, I got, uh, uh, these these inspired thoughts running through my head when you were talking about dandelion tea and and other herbs and things we might find in our own gardens and uh, and and I'm wondering if you have perhaps any kind of um, recommended uh, resources uh, uh, websites or or books um, for foraging for, you know if we wanted to go around in our own backyard or maybe our own local. Uh, national park, you know, be it the Indiana Dunes or whatever. Yes. <laughs> I don't even know yes. if it's legal to yes, forage I do. in the dunes. So <laughs> actually the, um, the Douglas Center, oh, yeah. um, and I don't know if they're doing it right now because of COVID, but they have um, walks that you can take with them. The rangers will go with you. They will show you um, herbs that are indigenous to our area. Um, also, um, if anybody's local here, um, there's a farmer's market on Sundays at the end of Lake Street where the train station is. And uh, there is a group there called Ancient Mystics. And they have classes every Tuesday and Thursday um, in Gary that will take you through their garden and show you the medicinal herbs and edibles um, that are just out in nature. Like literally you can just walk outside and, 
and grab your your herbs for the day or or for the week. Um, there's also a book um, that has been in publication since 1954. It's a book that I grew up with, and it's called Back to Eden, E D E N. Um, and it is amazing the information that Jethro Cross talks about in that book that has come to fruition um, today. He talked about it in 1954 and said that diabetes is going to be an epidemic. Guess what? It is to this day. So that's an excellent book. Um, that can be found on Amazon as well, um, used or new. Um, and then of course there's vibrations. <laughs> People can come there. Um, I'm always there to educate, to inform. Before the pandemic started, um, we also um, do workshops every month. Um, and those vary from spiritual workshops to um, herbal medicinal workshops. Um, we got through the first two this year and then everything just fell apart. So next year is a new beginning. I'm just post posting a bunch of these links in the uh, chat uh, as you're Rebecca, uh, mentioning all those. Rebecca, one of the kids, uh, one of the things Drake and Isis also internalized, thanks to you, was your practice of having uh, apple cider shots and fire fire oh, cider shots. fire shot. cider shots. And um, yeah, and the kids, uh, you know, the whole idea of doing a shot and how we society imposes a lot of alcohol consumption just through the normalization of it being a social activity, you know, you sell this promotions that if you drink Hennessy, you're going to have this beautiful girlfriend and wear a suit jacket. And we know the truth is far from the, far from that. Um, but all the associations that people uh, put together, one of the things I love about you was Drake and Isis to this day, if someone says shot, they start banging on the table. It's, it's shot, and shot, it's shot, shot. Right. <laughs> Right. And they, they love coming by you. They love all your juices. If I asked them right now, they could read your menu from their memory. Oh, that's um, awesome. Your place is awesome. Thank and, you. Yeah, Thank your place you. is awesome. Tell, tell, them about, tell them about that, um, that buffalo wing um, uh, cauliflower that you Oh, so did. nutritional. So we do Wing Wednesday, which was today. We were just swamped today. So they are wings in the traditional meat style, but they're cauliflower. So we do sticky tie, buffalo, and barbecue. And I have actually had people that did not know they were right. chicken, <laughs> which I think is hilarious. I, I, I was a vegetarian. I was oh. a vegetarian for 27 years. Yeah. And uh, so I know, I know meatless, leatherless, uh, uh, you know, trying to be pacifist lifestyle. Um, and um, I started eating meat again about 13 years ago. And I had those with uh, Cynthia, yeah. And they they're just unbelievable. Yeah. They were so good. I bought I bought two more plates that day. I remember yes, that. Yes, you did. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I did not want to stop eating them, so I didn't. Thank you for that, Harry. <laughs> and you said that's on Thursday. So people that's on Wednesday. Right. Wing oh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Wednesday's done. Yeah. I just got to say those beans sound mighty delicious. And I'm coming next Wednesday to get some. Oh, uh, we'll be there, Miss L. Davis. <laughs> That's my niece. <laughs> Lucas, do we have any more questions? Let's see. Um, yeah, it uh, doesn't quite look like it there, but... Okay. Uh, and we're just about getting out of time. Um, but I think, oh, I, I, there was a question, yeah, also from Elle about how you come up with your juice combos. What's, what is your muse, Miss mm. Raspberry? <laughs> so a lot of, uh, several of my juices were my father's. Um, so I am actually second generation in this. And my son, Kyle, who is also a partner and the chef at Vibrations, is third generation. So we're going to keep this going. Um, so I have a couple juices that um, were from dad. And I use nutritional value. So I name them according to the benefits that they have sometimes. Like we have the belly buster. 
And the belly buster is not because it's so big, it's gonna bust your belly. It's a belly buster because of the nutritional value. There's celery and ginger and turmeric and pineapple, which aids in digestion and carrots. Um, so that's my motivation is the nutritional value. I've of, I often, um, often people come in and say, oh, I go to Smoothie King all the time. Smoothie King, we are not. We do not add any sugars. We do not add any powders. Um, our juice bar is vegan. We don't use any dairy. Um, and it's about the nutrition and what this smoothie or juice is good for. So Eric will tell you, I write my, um, my orders on a prescription pad because people come in and say, hey, doc, what do I need? This is what I'm feeling. This is what I need. And we also custom make juices for people. If they're feeling, you know, whatever it is they're feeling, they're, they've got pain, they've got inflammation, then we may take a base juice, the belly buster, and say, hey, let's add some bee pollen to that because we need some additional nutrients or energy. Um, so that's my muse. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, I love that. Yeah. You know, and that reminds we me. Got, we got a question from Craig and Isis here. Oh, another question there? Yeah, All there. right. Go ahead, please. Question, yeah. question from the peanut gallery here. Um, what would you think, Rebecca, is your uh, most healthy smoothie? Oh, I can't say there's one. <laughs> there's not one. And you know what? Um, I get asked every day, which is your best which is your favorite smoothie or juice? And my answer is always the same. That's like asking me which one of my children is my favorite. Wow. <laughs> it depends on the day. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the, the, the point you made about uh, I, I love that writing, writing your recipes and, and down on, was it your recipes that, uh, that you write down on a prescription pad? No, the pad? orders, when people the make orders, order. sorry. Yeah, so yeah, like on, it's a prescription great. pad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that reminds me too, just of all these, these uh, well, the, uh, certainly our, our modern Western uh, um, form of medicine is, is really about just kind of reducing the cures to the, these pill formats uh, and, and certainly not, not at all to, uh, um, to cast any doubt on just the, the, the great science of modern medicine, but not to throw the baby out with the bathwater, not to get rid of uh, the, all of the um, natural forms of, of just maintaining our health. Medicine should be health. Our health and wellness regime is, is, is a lifelong goal and a quest. It makes me think very much in, in traditional, uh, is it Chinese? In Eastern Chinese, yeah. I believe, uh, medicinal thought, the, the, the doctor's responsibility is to keep you healthy. And if you get sick, in essence, then there's a, there's a failure. Uh, of, of service. Whereas in the Western tradition, it's about uh, uh, the doctor only begins to intervene uh, a bit tongue in cheek, but um, when you get sick, it's about, it's about, uh, the, about curing the ailment. And, and I think also just in terms of arts and cultural engagement and enrichment, also you're, you're seeing this, this great interesting new trend uh, amongst the um, healthcare to, uh, we call it, it's called social prescription, to basically uh, have a doctor prescribe that one should go to the theater, that one should go to a museum. Uh, and so the idea that, that there are so many ways that we can and, and should and, and need to take care of ourselves um, that threat, it's, it's through you know, physical, physiological, psychological, and, and social wellness and well-being absolutely yeah absolutely so um i do believe we're we're about uh, out of time here and um just wanted to give a final plug for the vibrations health wellness juice bar and cafe uh, i posted the link in the chat but you'll find them at vibrations juice bar 
www.ghostbusters.com and in, uh, in the uh, lovely uh, 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 community of Miller within Gary, Indiana on Lake Street. So do come check them out. Um, then uh, also, uh, I, uh, I think we are, I wanted to also give, yeah, uh, Eric and I were discussing earlier and reminding ourselves that the uh, libations uh, exhibition at the um, Fluid Coffee Bar is about coming to a close here as we reach the end of August. So there are two more days, um, Thursday and Friday of this week to go check out the Libations exhibition if you're interested. That's at um, Fluid Coffee Bar, which their website I can post in the chat. That's fluidcoffeelove.com and you'll find them. Yeah, so they have multiple locations, but this is the Michigan City, Indiana location uh, where that exhibition is taking place that, uh, that we co-curated. So at 518 Franklin Street in Michigan City, Indiana. So if you are swinging through, or if you have time, do, do please go and check that out before the exhibition comes down. Um, but uh, otherwise, uh, I certainly, and this was, this was really great. I, I very much enjoyed this. And oh, I, I, I really, I enjoyed the whole um, four part libation series. And I think this was a fantastic capstone to that series, just to, to bring it all together. The whole um, theme of the libations series has been about um, uh, uh, health and, and well being through many forms of, uh, of, of expression and engagement and community. And, uh, and I think this really, yeah, is, is, is a great um, uh, bookend to that exploration of, of health and well-being. Your, your presentation today and our conversation, Rebecca. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so very much. And uh, yeah, wonderful, very good. So with that, um, I think we're gonna we're gonna conclude tonight. Um, thanks everybody for for joining, whether you're on uh, uh, on Facebook or on uh, um, Zoom, and uh, to those in the future who tune in via Facebook or YouTube, thanks, hello, or welcome, and uh, and we hope to see you around. Uh, but uh, do also go back and check out the Chicago Bruseum's website at chicagobruseum.org uh, because there will be uh, additional virtual happy hour conversations that we'll be uh, announcing shortly. So be sure to check that out um, while you're there. Also scroll down and, and visit the YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe there and on all the different social media channels. And, visit the Vibrations uh, website and subscribe on all the social media channels. Uh, likewise with um, tattooarttherapy.org. That is the site for Sacred Transformations, the uh, uh, co-creator uh, of the Libation series. Visit them and subscribe on all the social media channels and uh, do consider donating to your your uh, not-for-profit organization of choice. Keep them afloat during these difficult times and patronize your your local uh your local uh, 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 uh vendors all right thanks so much everyone have Thank a wonderful you, evening stay safe you, be well we'll see you around